basically it's like you have ridges mm -hmm. along your spine and so there's like those empty voids that you can actually use a crest wedge to just basically wedge it in there and then it stays intact and it just helps with your you know, it's crazy what you can do with the body yo bro. honestly we're like legos <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna go like backwards hat on this vibe you want to do a backwards hat vibe okay i'm gonna let you do that as i get comfortable and i sit down on this couch yeah, backwards vibe is the vibe. Yeah. I'm gonna use this avocado for a little bit, but cushion for the wall. Why are you touching my thigh, dog? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Ah, here we uh, go again. Oh, yep, here we go again. Cripple. Yep. If you guys didn't know, Sandra broke her fucking foot. Yep. You can literally hear me. Dumbass. Yeah. Yo, what was up with that video of you dancing with your fucking brace on, bro? It's like she looks dumb as fuck. <laughs> I was like, that's sick. Mm. That's sick, but dumb. That's sick. <laughs> nope. All right. Well, All right. yo, what's up, y'all? It's your boy, James. And it's your boy, Carl. And welcome back to another episode of the Why Not Podcast, where we talk about whatever we want. Because, because why not? <laughs> because why not? And so today, we're going to try something a little different. Usually what me and Carl do is whenever we do these episodes, we either hop on here with no idea what the hell we're going to talk about, or we hop on here with a general idea of what we're going to talk about. But this is going to be a different segment where one of us hosts the episode and the other one has no idea what we're talking about. What so, the fuck's going on, dude? <laughs> we're, just, we're just throwing in an episode here. Yeah, I mean, you got to switch it up a little bit. And it's been a while, so we decided to give you guys a little bit of a treat. And if we like it, maybe we'll continue to do it uh, further down the road. So, Carl, I wanted to ask you a question, okay? All right, go ahead. This is going to be the it. main topic of the episode. All right, bet. Let me know what's up. Let me know what's up. Okay. <clears throat> and also, I wanted to ask this because I, I feel like... Um, I will get to know you a little bit more, and okay. other people will get to know you a little bit more. And the you guys yeah. don't want to know my deep dark secrets, yeah. bro. It's, okay. it's rough out here. So here's the prompt for today. Okay, what's the prompt? First, I'm gonna let Sandra go to the room with her crutches. What? You're scaring yeah, Cuba because we can hear you. You're just crutching around. She's got one like one fucking fuzzy slipper on. Yeah, you're distracting everybody. <laughs> As she says, as she... Yeah, close the door. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, sorry, guys. The question or the prompt for today is... Yeah. What are you most knowledgeable about? Mm. What do you think you know the most about? Like, not like, of course, in the whole world, but like, what is something that you feel like you know very, very well? And that maybe you can even teach someone. That is so hard. This is actually extremely funny. This is a really funny topic because <laughs> when you... <clears throat> this might turn into a deep episode real quick. Ooh, okay. um, I I'm have to it. dissect the brain here. Dissect uh, because brain like I am a guy who constantly tells himself that he does not know anything. <laughs> and I'm... Um, I'm... I can't... I... I feel like I'm a guy who just fucking, I'm like a fun fat guy. You okay. know what I mean? It's like, I'm not super knowledgeable in just like one thing. I feel like if I just hyper focus on it, especially with the fact that I'm kind of like ADHD, I'm like, kind of an understatement. Shut the fuck up. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's like, there's just a lot of things that I could like really get into. Um, you know, the funny part is, is like I've danced my whole life, but I don't even think I'm like super knowledgeable in dance my mind likes to forget about a lot of things that I learned throughout the way, but I can still do them. Um, things that I may be knowledgeable about, um, ice cream scooping, dancing, golfing, um, my job. I think I'm very knowledgeable in my job, which is super ironic. Cause like I used to think that I would like suck at that kind of thing. But like lately I've been realizing like I'm pretty good at my job because of, um, because of like the numbers that I have to memorize and like, you know, just the way that things are done at my job. Like you just have to like know your shit. You know what I mean? And even though you have like a guide and like a reference in front of you, it's like it's good to just have it in the dome. But um, this is funny. The reason why I say that it's funny because Jasmine and I were literally just talking about it. And like 
because I'm a guy who's super. I'm not trying to turn this into like a sad episode at all. I like I I talk down to myself a lot and I doubt myself a lot and I like like I I don't like myself a lot. <laughs> I know. <Boo>. And <laughs> I know. And it's this thing where like you just go about your days and you just go about like your weeks and months and you're just thinking like you're not good at anything you know even though i have so many people and tell me i don't talk don't think that i don't acknowledge them like i do because everybody comes up to me and it's like what do you mean like you know how to do this you know how to do that you don't know how to do you know how to do this it's just hard for me to wrap my fucking brain around man it's like i, I see the love and support from like other people but like it's just something within me that just like, nope, Carl, you don't know shit. But if you ask me something that has to pertain to like the things that I do, I can probably give you a whole lot of fucking answers. Okay. I'll tell you that. Interesting. So yeah, it's just like, I don't think that I'm super knowledgeable about just one thing. I mean, other than SpongeBob, like I'm knowledgeable about <laughs> SpongeBob. But I mean, like other than that, I feel like I just know a shitload of facts and things to do with different topics in my life like it's just you know so yeah okay would you if you don't mind i would love to learn something on this podcast and maybe even teach something for the viewers or Shit. the listeners and it can be about one. anything maybe be about anything. if you want to talk about spongebob you can yeah you can you can just give me one bro because like i can't i can't pick you know how my brain works bro it's like i can't pick like you'd have to pick the thing for me and i can probably just talk about it okay what, do, um, what would you want to know? Like, what do you want to learn? Okay. Um, so, um, I know that you talked about ice cream scooping. You talked yes. about golf. You talked about your job. Um, uh, you, what else did you talk about? You talked about dance. Yeah. You know? Um, now, I know that a lot of people know you for uh, dancing. Mm -hmm. And we've heard stories about you scooping up ice cream. That's why you got those <laughs> nice, sexy forearms. Um, but... I kind of want to learn a little bit more about maybe what do you do outside of the pod? You know, like what about your, your job? My job. Yeah. Um, well, this could turn into like a long little thing. Uh, so my job is I work for a nonprofit organization called LifeNet Health. It's, uh, it's basically, um, damn it. There's a, okay. If you guys didn't know, right. There's a way that you describe your job to your friends and your people that they just know what you're talking about, but there's also the corporate version of your job that is true. and how you're supposed to talk about your job. In my job, we're not supposed to say certain terms because it could be deemed sensitive to other people that have gone through this situation. So as for the sake of my job, I'm just going to say that we are basically an organ donor facility. And uh, basically what happens there is that imagine if somebody who has unfortunately passed away uh, was actually an organ donor. Um, whatever gifts are provided to our um, organization, uh, I'm the one as my job title as a processing technician for the musculoskeletal department. We get um, we receive the gifts from the donor and we actually turn them into graphs and graphs are <clears throat> We make the graphs out of what was given to us um, through <clears throat> through uh, the donor, the donor and the donor family, and we basically make it into a graph to send to the hospitals that uh, get put into someone else's body, and we basically give them. Uh, it's basically what like people like to call like a second chance at life, and I think it's such a um, it's such an impactful thing to be doing what I'm doing because I've you know I've it wasn't like a every Asian series, I was like, you want to be a doctor, you know, some, a nurse, like something that had to go down the medical field. So I, I would, yeah. So I basically would say that like what I'm doing is something that has to deal with the medical field, uh, but not of the living. And, um, that's, you know, it's a very unfortunate thing, especially when you're like walking into your job and you just know that this is what you have to do every day, but it's so sensitive to the fact that like, you just want everything to be perfect and which is basically how i go about my job um i i think i'm very it um what is it i had this is funny because i had a conversation with um jasper's boyfriend uh, no, uh what is it not jasper boy if i ever talk to jasper boyfriend i'm killing him yo what <laughs> jasper i i'm confused no no no, no. <laughs> okay no, no, no. i got my i got my words wrong i got my words twisted jasper's brother's girlfriend okay there we go marcy shout out marcy she's shout great out marcy. um what is it uh 
Jasper's brother's girlfriend used to work at LifeNet Health as well. And um, it's funny because a lot of us work at LifeNet Health too. Um, like I have a friend who currently is uh, working with the, um, what is it? What is it? What is it? Oh, tissue recovery team here in Richmond. Uh, her sister works for, uh, Jasper's sister works for LifeNet Health as too. Uh, LifeNet Health as well. I work for LifeNet Health. Really mm-hmm. great company. Um, so for me, uh, whenever I was talking to her, it the job actually helps with your ADHD. How and so? it's crazy. It, even though they... Even though they pay you, right? Because, you know, it's just like any regular job and you get a paycheck. But the thing is, it also pays you with hyper focus. And me, just how the job is set up, it basically helps your hyper focus on like what goes down inside of the room. Like it's very routine. Mm -hmm. Everything is in a routine that you're in. And I was just talking to this about like. Like when I have a go, when I have to go in and have the same routine all the time, if something breaks that routine, I'm just like, I'm icked about it. Like it Good. just has to happen this way. And, um, but yeah, that's basically like what I do. I work for a, a nonprofit organization called LifeNet Health. And there's just, there's just so much to it, bro. Like there's so much, so much things that I do. So I didn't know that you work with uh, organ donation. I think that that's pretty cool. Uh, do you yeah. ever get to see any organs? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily, because we're all split into different departments. Like for me, I work in a musculoskeletal department. If you live in Virginia Beach, there's like three, there's three LifeNet Health buildings. There's one on concert, there's one on Bayside, and there's another one at Ward Court that's currently getting shut down right now. But it's still, um, I think it's still getting turned into something. I'm not sure what it is, but the the different departments that we work in, there's like the, there's a musculoskeletal department, there's a CV department, which is for cardiovascular, anything that has to do with like hearts and arteries and valves. Mm. And then going into um, even, uh, we do skin grafts as well. So there's a dermis. So there's a there's a, a dermis uh, department, there's a demineralizing department. And there's just so many things that you can do with the human body that is just it's crazy what you can turn them into. Like, for example, I'll, I'll put this into perspective, right? A milkshake. <laughs> Shut up. Okay, that's look. A, that's, that that's that is not what you compare a... my job to. <laughs> um, for example, this is like the one example I love to give to people. Okay. Um, Achilles tendon, yes. right? There's a lot of people that tear their Achilles a lot, right? So, of course, if someone's going to get their Achilles replaced, they need to have, there needs to be another Achilles tendon, right? So, within the ranges of the age from 12 to 75, depending on how your body is, and especially when you passed away, your Achilles tendon that we use on one donor can actually get transplanted into uh, the organ receiver. Mm-hmm. And so basically what we do is, when you look at your Achilles, right? Where's, this whole where's, thing. Where's your Achilles? Your Achilles is right where your foot is at. It's like the back part of like oh, where your ankle I'm sorry. is at. So right here is your calcaneus. Calcaneus. Right here is where your talus is at. And then going, riding down this. You want me to tickle your foot? No, <laughs> Put the sock back on. <laughs> no, no free. Fee no picks. free. You better blur that out. You got to pay for that. That's premium. <laughs> yeah. So basically, right here is where your talus is at. Right here, where is where your calcaneus is at. This whole big part of it, and then riding alongside the backside right here is your Achilles tendon. Right. So basically, some people get a tear. Even I don't think people realize like how sensitive like your your tendons are especially your meniscus like one little tear or like one little laceration of your meniscus like that just affects the entire like functionality of your of your part so basically what happens is is we receive an achilles tendon it comes in as the whole thing like not your whole foot but i'm talking about like it comes in to where it's like you know the fat and also all of like all the tissue is still around your calcaneus and your talus and then your achilles tendon comes in with all the muscle that's on it mm-hmm. so basically what we have to do is we have to debride it so what happens is we get this your talus comes off and your talus can ter- be turned into like a couple of things like we make can make this into any regular like um we call it cancellus. It's basically like the um, the spongy part of your. I forgot what it's called, man. This is why I need to remember terms. Um, it's the it's like the spongy part, right? Yeah, yeah. Spongy, so SpongeBob part. Spongy part of your talus. We can take that out, or we can also use that talus to shoot a um, a cancellus uh, dowel, which which I just learned that cancellus dowels can actually be inserted into your knee, and it fills like this void of like 
like just say like one part of like your kneecap got infected or something and you need to get it taken out and we can actually put another one in mm -hmm. so we can turn it into that uh your calcaneus right here um this is what stays to make the bone block right so it's actually like a block that gets inserted into someone's foot what yeah so but it can't go in as this whole thing obviously okay. because of all the tissue that's on it so what we do is that we deride the tissue off right we deride the tissue off and then all the tissue it should be clear of tissue and what happens is is we bring it to the bandsaw and we can cut it into certain dimensions that it has to be if we're there's like a certain there's like different things that it can be turned into from um an fatb to an fatbc to an fat and that's just that, that's just the the regular tendon but with no bone block like you can just get the tendon by itself but basically what it is it, we can cut it into whatever dimensions that it needs to be usually for an fatb it has its own dimension that it sticks that it sticks with um but fatbc there's like a different whole there's a whole different measurement to that and it also has to be um korea eligible but to that what happens is is that whenever you cut it out you just cut the sides off and then you'll cut the insurgent site that's like right here to make it into that square shape and then you cut the top off and the length of it has to be at least 25 millimeters and then we also have to make sure we debride all the tissue that's connected to this because obviously you don't want another organ donor tissue on a new body okay because the tissue it'll just build around the new tissue right and then we just debride this whole tendon here and you man i've had a tendon that was like 300 millimeters long that shit is huge sounds delicious like it's from like, a, <laughs> like it was like some type of donor that was like six foot and we we're like this dude was tall Damn. man but Rest yeah man so basically tendon. i can make an achilles tendon like bone block and i can make that gets packaged and then we send it gets processed it gets processed it gets packaged it gets looked over with qa you know we have to make sure that everything just has to be spot on perfect because it's, mm -hmm. it has something to deal with so something so sensitive with someone's second chance at life yeah you know what i mean so it's like basically it's like if they get that achilles tendon we can put it into another body and then they just go through some rehab stuff and then they'll get back to walking again you pack it up it gets door dashed it doesn't get door dashed no, no door it's dash? not door dashed okay i mean listen i don't know exactly how it works that's why we're but I mean, that's why you here. try to that's why you just try to like compare it to something else so you understand what yeah, i'm saying yeah okay, cool. you gotta cool, door dash the tendon you know oh, like gosh. fucking but, idiot uh yeah that's basically what i can do with my job and there's just i feel like um we talk about it at work all the time it's like we're we're basically we feel like superheroes over there you know what I mean? Like I, I genuinely do take my job seriously and I really do love my job. You know what I mean? Because there's so much, um, there's so much purpose to it and there's so much, um, it's so meaningful every time like we watch a video or we, uh, get, we actually receive letters from the organ family that received the, the received the graft. Mm -hmm. And then they send us thank, thanks to you letters. And they're just like, man, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be able to be walking again. If it wasn't for you, I probably wouldn't be able to have enough strength to like hold my grandkids or whatever and it's just like it's one of the, the like the most purest and one of the most like genuine types of love like you can feel that like you you haven't even seen the person but just knowing that you're sitting there and you're working really really hard especially like my job is like physically demanding like mm -hmm. we just we're on our feet for like eight hours you know what i mean like yeah you can sit down but like usually you're always like walking around everywhere like you're walking here 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 and you got to do all these things but seeing the type of like acknowledgement from the family at the end of the day is just like i really am doing something big even though i'm not seeing it i'm only seeing like the labor part of it like all the work but then whenever you see like the outcome of what happened to this family and like how we basically gave them a second chance is like it's so you know it just hits a heart and there's it's more than just a job you know what i mean it's more than just any type of like career that you can have like you're really saving lives out here so it's it's really good it's very rewarding. Yeah, it's crazy. It's just crazy because I never would have thought I had a job like this. I thought my <laughs> jobs were always just going to be like some fuck shit. You know what I mean? Like, third, I yeah, third. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, I actually, it, it's a big thing that I do this job. Given it's very physically demanding and I work in overnight shifts. So, we actually work and we package and process our donors like from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. Sometimes mm -hmm. even later, you know, depending on like how, like how quick and efficient you can be with the donor and how much you make. Yeah. But, you know, it's just, it all, it all just boils down to like such a good cause. So there's really just nothing to it other than like you're doing this 
and it's God's work, basically, man. Like someone, pray, like someone's praying for this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? And we're the ones that we get to gift it to them. Yeah. You know, shout out to all like the shout out to all the organ uh, organ donor families that unfortunately they did pass away. But every time they mention something in like a video that we watch, we're always like, they're so strong. You know what I mean? They're always talking about like you know my like my little girl. Like even though she's not here with us, like, I'm glad she's able to like live on through another organ family and how they can help them and that means that her life isn't over like her her life is basically continuing in a new body and it's like it's it's so beautiful so beautiful and so genuine and uh i'm I'm glad that i mentioned it i'm this is a good topic i'm glad it is dude it is it's like it's crazy because it's like because you know i can't necessarily talk about my job a lot because it's it's for certain ears you know what i mean so i I think i should have put a trigger warning yeah. before like anyone watches this episode because it's like it is really sensitive to some people and and it's not even just like the organ like the the whole process of an organ donor like alone is already like some people find it eerie but it's just talking about you know just talking about um the body some people just they that's just, like not their niche like um, jasper for yeah. example i can't explain my child to jasper that much because every time i talk about what i do she's always like <laughs> You know, I, I get it. I used to be like that too. Um, I don't know. I think yeah. over time I kind of just numbed out. I don't even know how I got into it, bro. Because at first I thought I was going to be like, uh, about it. But then something about it just came so naturally to me. Like mm-hmm. as soon as I stepped into the room or like even when I first looked at it, I was like, I was just like in awe. I was like, wow, yeah, you can actually do this, you know, and this is, this is how you go about making them. And like, it's, it's, it's such a good thing for me too, because I, like I said, I don't find myself really good at a lot of things. So when I find something that I'm good at and something that I put in so much work and effort into, and bro, it's this the, this whole career path is such like a long process. Like it's funny because <laughs> we use the word process, but it's like it's it's this thing where there's so many you you're learning something every single day at this job. It never like tires like it, it doesn't your brain isn't idle in this mm-hmm. in this whole thing. Like your brain is constantly like just trying to function through the day. And it's like you're always learning something new. You're always fixing something. It really just keeps you on your feet. You know what I mean? But I feel like that's what I need to acknowledge that like that I don't realize that like I am putting a lot of work into my career. And it's it's only going up from here for me to be honest. Like, you know, a lot of like my supervisors um, shout out, <clears throat> shout out to my supervisors over there at Life Net Health. You guys are amazing people. You guys have, are just always focused on like my growth and you, I can see that you guys really care about like where I'm, where I'm trying to head to and you guys are trying to help me with that. So shout out to them. And then shout out to my Life Net fam, bro. Like all the people that I work with on the overnight, we're hood rat as fuck, dude. Do they watch the podcast? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They do. They follow the podcast. You know, some of them have why not podcast stickers, Oh, what? you know? So yeah, man, I told them and I show like our podcast episodes all the time. Like whenever I'm on YouTube on the tech area, I'll just say, Hey guys, look, this is the podcast that I'm in. Um, shout out to Cam, Cam Watford. He, he actually wanted to get some help on like starting his own podcast. So my boy, we still got to get on that because I know that you needed some help setting something up. So whenever Cam's, um, podcast comes up, y'all better make sure, y'all better make sure to go watch that thing, bro, for real. But it's just, um, yeah, I feel like the people make it too mm-hmm. because we're all going through the same thing. It's like, we all know that this is super tiring. And we all know that this is just a, a such a crazy thing. But when you do it with people who are like on the same grind as you, it's 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 beautiful. It's beautiful. I love working there. So I, I hope you guys understand. I never take a single moment at work for granted. Like I genuinely love being there with you guys, even though we're all so tired. It's like you guys are just such a vibe. Hey, what's up, guys? Hope you guys are really enjoying this episode. We just wanted to interrupt this episode so that we can talk about our partnership with Okaze. So Okaze is actually a high quality gym apparel brand and their main mission is to be the best version of yourself through how anime made us feel. And if you go on Okaze's site right now, you can actually get 15% off their merch. So this is what I'm wearing right now. This is their Okaze shirt. It is amazing. I love how it's an oversized tee. So I didn't have to get like a super large shirt. It was a medium. And if you guys see it, it looks kind of dope. I'm gonna turn right here real quick just so you guys can see the back. 
stop <laughs> <laughs> anyway yes this is okazi's shirt and it is amazing we love the way that it feels james is on the way right now so if you go on their site and type in why not okaze at checkout you actually get 15 percent off your purchase so don't miss out on it we're gonna be we're gonna be part of this for a while and we are just so excited to be a part of their journey so we thank you guys so much so if you love anime you love working out whether that be one piece dragon ball z naruto bleach whatever make sure that you hop on this brand and support it Thank you guys so much. Remember to use our code why not Okaze so then you can get 50% of your purchase. And back to the episode. Yay! It's tiring being working at night, but it's like when you do it with like some great people, it's it, that's all it takes, bro. I think it's crazy what the human body can can do. The capabilities of it, especially mm -hmm. the healing capabilities and how we yes. can take something that doesn't necessarily belong to this body but still yeah. your body can adapt to it i think it's a, it's a crazy concept that not many people really like sit down and think about um yeah. but i'm really glad that you talked a little bit more about what you do because i know that there are some people who are kind of in the medical field or who are interested in that for sure and so uh i think like just hearing about you know all these things that you do especially if yeah. there are people who are listening to this and they have a family member who needed some sort of organ donation you know i think that that kind of sure. brings another level of respect to you and your work so i yeah. really appreciate you kind of giving us a little deep dive of what mr paulo does on his uh, <laughs> i can't say nine to five because not it's not not a nine to five what is it's it like, what, what would you call it like it a, is a nine to five but it's not a nine to five from like 9 a.m to 5 p.m it's like 9 p.m to 5 oh, a.m there we go yeah so yeah, yeah. You, you basically got it right it's so they're just five. like yeah you'll be working at nine to five okay at night what <laughs> like fuck <laughs> bamboozled damn it bamboozled you said it was a nine to five they got your ass Nah, but it, it definitely is such a great thing though and then i just want to take this time to just say really thank you like for the people that that yes they did receive an organ donation but also to the families that you know um basically like someone had to pass away and that's that's just a really sad situation like i couldn't I can imagine like the pain and like the suffering that you like had to go through and the grief but i hope you know like everything that everything that's happening is just making sure that it's being taken care of like we want to make sure that everything just comes out the way that it's supposed to be and we make sure that we don't take anything for granted while we're inside of that room working because like it's such like i said it just comes out to such a bigger outcome and like reading all the stories that these families share and watching all the videos like it, it's so nice it's so nice to like hear from them and know that they're doing better because of someone's gift to them and it just it, it brings something to the heart man i promise you that's what's going through my usually like we mess around at work and we're just like you know cracking jokes and stuff like that but for in reality of it all it's like what we're really doing is just such a such a beautiful thing yeah you know, in all 38 to 39 episodes that we have so far of the podcast, oh I feel like this one, you were probably the most, um, <laughs> your speech was good. <laughs> what do you mean? Your articulation and everything that you worked it was very nice. Oh, thank yeah, you. It thank was you. a very nice flow. You, you telling me that I talk like shit, bro? No, <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying that like a lot of the time when we're on the podcast, we fuck around and we say a lot of shit, and we always end up going to saying like ums, ums, or filler words or cursing. But throughout pretty much this whole episode you've been just straight giving facts and info and gems and i'm just like yo this guy it's the hyper focus i'm like dog, yo I'm this, telling you. this guy is actually a fucking professional <laughs> i didn't i didn't know i didn't know that this guy was like that all right tell no. me a little bit more about the achilles tendon <laughs> it's a strong tendons are really strong it's, it's really i eat really tendons and pho that's, that's the different type of tendon brother Okay, I don't it's know. animal tendon. This I is actually human body tendon. It's crazy. Tendons are good. Oh uh, yeah, there's just so many things that are crazy about our body, especially like our bones. Our bones are extremely strong. No, we're not. Um, it's just <laughs> not that one. Because <laughs> <laughs> her leg is broken. But yeah, no, it's it was it's the hyper focus, man. I'm telling you, like as soon as you get me like hyper focused on one thing, bro, it's like I can't shut up about it. Like because the only reason why I'm not talking about it as much is because I don't know how much I'm supposed to talk about it. Mm. You know what I mean? Because then again, it's such a it's such an intimate and private topic sometimes to like 
you know, what we do in there because you don't want to get way too specific, but it's just kind of like the general idea of like what we do. And, um, yeah, yeah, it's such a great thing, man. Like, uh, for example, uh, one of the things that I did learn is that, um, your hemi pelvis, right? So your hemi pelvis is around like your, um, like your crotch area. And what happens is that you have this part of your, you have, we get them in halves. So they will be part of your left hemi pelvis and your right hemi pelvis. Whenever you get that half, there's actually the part that circles around here called your iliac crest. And basically with that iliac crest, you can actually cut those down into strips. And what happens with that strip, it becomes a wedge that you can turn into as soon as you debride all the tissue off of it. And what happens is you can actually use that iliac crest a wedge as a filler for one of your spines. What? One of the yeah. vertebrae? Yeah. Well, not what I wouldn't say one of the ver- the vertebrae. I just forget the term of it. But basically, it's like you have ridges mm. along your spine, and so there's like those empty voids that you can actually use a crest wedge to just basically wedge it in there, and then it stays intact, and it just helps with your. You know, it's crazy what you can do with the body. Yo, bro. honestly, we're like Legos. <laughs> 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 it's basically no like there's there's an actual thing like especially on my job called a cervical and it's basically like you building you're, you're you're turning you're turning like different pieces of bone well i wouldn't say bone well i mean yeah it is bone uh you're tur- basically turning uh pieces of bone and you're kind of building like legos with it that's how we kind of like describe it it's like but it's like it's such a crazy thing because you do so much with the human body that people just don't know what you're capable of doing with your body and it's amazing but yeah um so what you're pretty much saying is that we're bionicles we are bionicles bro bionicles bro <laughs> bionicles yo what who how would you know about bionicles dog honestly i don't know shit about bionicles. you know about bionicles bro <laughs> do, you, do you know about bionicles i had a bionicle when I, I had like three of them bitches when i was a kid bro I, i've never had a bionicle before <laughs> That's going to be another different topic because we can talk about Bionicles all day. I don't think uh, we should talk about Bionicles, bro. You don't no think one, so? No. no one, it's like talking about Magic Treehouse. I don't... Magic Treehouse. I'm trying to remember what that is. Magic Treehouse, the books. Magic Nights Treehouse. Before Dawn. Dinosaurs Before Dark. I don't think I know what that is. Dude, fucking relax. Wait. Jack and Annie, bro. Magic Treehouse? What? Fucking Merlin, bro. What the hell is Magic Treehouse? Magic... What are you talking about? What's Magic Tree House? Magic Tree House. The fuck? Are you joking? Oh, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. One of these covers. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No. This looks familiar. I've never read it. <laughs> but I've, I've seen I've seen these books before. You're wild. Never you, read that, them. Though. That's the reason why my imagination as a child just roamed free. Hmm. It's basically a story about these two kids named Jack and Annie that go up in a treehouse and they find a book and it's Merlin's book. Merlin, like the fucking wizard Merlin. And what happens is they teleport them in time to basically, I don't know, sometimes they learn something, sometimes they fix something. Okay. And so like, you know, they'll they'll go back in time and then they'll like go through all these ages like one was about knights and the other one was about dinosaurs and the other one was about the Great Wall of China and like, you know, they just... It's basically like history. You yeah, know okay. what I mean? So, yeah. I loved Magic Treehouse books growing up. Shout out to Miss McDavid, my second grade teacher, for exposing us to that book. It, it was such a great read. I'm sure she's listening to the podcast. Yeah. I hope she's still alive. I hope she's still alive. She was a pretty old lady. You know, I think about that very often. And I'm like, man, my teachers from middle school, high school, elementary school, I wonder how many of them are still here with us. And I wonder what they're doing. Uh, me too. I had this one teacher in the fifth grade back in uh, Holmes Elementary. I don't know if some of the people that if I went to school with are reading the, or watching this pod. But like I had a teacher named Miss Glenn. And she was like one of the hardest teachers that I've ever had. Like she she like made sure that I was in con- like I had to control myself. Because like I was always a rowdy kid. But mm-hmm. she was like, boy... You better not. <laughs> you know? And then, uh, but then I, I recently saw her whenever I went back to Pensacola and I found out that she actually got paralyzed. Oh. Yeah, so it kind of sucks. Um, it really did suck. And then um, another one of my teachers that was really great, her name is Miss Broughton. Miss Broughton. Miss Broughton. She was actually the the mother, uh, the mother of my really close uh, middle school and high school friend back in the day. His name is Bryce Broughton. He actually owns a... Uh, uh, 
I don't know if, like, what it what it is. It's like it's basically like a lifestyle brand. You know what I mean? A hoodie yeah. gang, and he's basically freaking traveling like in Miami, Vegas, whatever. He had he had an interview with Nadia. You know Nadia. the gamer Nadia, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, but yeah, my man's going big, bro. He's doing a lot of big things over there. But yeah, I wonder how she's doing. She's a great, she's a great woman. Um, the one teacher that had such an impact on my life was Mrs. Wilson. Well, I'm sure her her last name is different now, but I called her Mrs. Wilson. Oh wait, no, 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 no. Wait, yeah, no, Mrs. Wilson, because she was a basically a language arts teacher. And we read a, a whole lot, like a whole lot of books in her class. Like that's like the first time I read To Kill a Mockingbird. Okay. Yeah, so that was her class was the first time I read that book. But then she was just so involved with my life. And I like, I followed her on Facebook. She followed me on mine. And she was just involving me in a lot of stuff. Like she was the first one to open this thing in our, uh, that's what she did. She became a teacher, but then our, the librarian at the school retired and she ended up becoming the librarian and she basically switched the entire library around. Like she called it the cat lounge. She made it a whole program. She won some awards because of it. Like she, she was causing a movement at the school, man. And I got to be, I was basically like the OG cat lounge. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, that's really crazy though for real. Cause I was like the OG group because I was there when she started it. And I was like one of the first people that like within the group that got to like, I worked on the damn lounge, bro. Like I was freaking setting the signs up, you know, freaking fixing the books for it to finally be opened up. And it was like a whole, it was like a whole like freaking clan, bro. And we were cool. It's crazy how some teachers can really make a big impact in students' sure. lives. Especially if you just like for some moments, if you can just stop being a teacher and just well, I don't want to stop being a teacher, but like go beyond what the curriculum tells you to teach. Yeah. And you're just a little bit more personal with the students. Oh, man. Yeah, I think dude. it's so cool, man. And if you're it's a packet like, teacher, shame on you. What's a packet teacher? A packet oh, teacher? Wait, are like teachers that kind of just like give Just packets? fucking give packets out, bro. Yeah, like you don't right. even want to talk to your students and shit. You just don't make go fill this packet out. Go read this and make sure you answer all the questions. Like fuck that, bro. Man, there are some very knowledgeable people out there, but all because you're knowledgeable doesn't mean you should be a teacher. As I, That is correct. <laughs> I've always wanted to be a teacher though. Really? That was one of the things that I, because I've always wanted to like impact young people's lives. Mm-hmm. Like I wanted to be a high school teacher and I wanted to be like high school because that's when that's when life starts changing. We can talk you know about I mean? Fortnite with the boys. We can talk about Fortnite, you know, we can talk about, but you know, I, I could I can't stay on top of the, yeah, see that? I can't stay on top of the alpha terms. That shit's crazy. I'd have to go back, but they, they'd probably just call me old. Only in but Ohio. That was, dude, see, I don't know why, bro. But yeah, I've always wanted to be a teacher. A lot of people say that I'm really good with kids. And I feel like I want to be that, I would be that type of teacher that wouldn't just give them packets and I wouldn't just give them homework that had nothing to do with what you're going to learn in life. Like I want to be able to like, as I want to prepare them as much as I possibly could Mm -hmm. because you're never prepared for life. You know what I mean? But that's the one thing I want them to understand is like, look, screwballs are going to be around, right? Like you're going to be freaking, they're going to be thrown in all different types of directions. You're not going to know what the fuck to do. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? But it's how you react to it. You know what I mean? And that's basically what I would explain to like a freaking 15 16 17 18 year old and like just prepare them for that you know what i mean because you know me growing up i didn't learn shit from school no mitochondria mitochondria like what the fuck am i learning about mitochondria e equals mc squared you know what's the crazy thing though i also forgot to talk about this i'm really fast at my job are you i think i am do they call you sonic no why not sometimes i think i'm fast though i picked up easily okay that's why because one of my one of my uh one of my coworkers, yeah, actually, fuck you, Joel. Damn. Yeah. Does Joel no, it's, watch? It's like this thing. Oh. Okay. No, he doesn't watch it, but I'm gonna show him this clip. But fuck yeah. you, Joel. Yeah. I'm ah. the, what the fuck was that? It's the sounds that we make at work. I'm super hyperactive. That's how people know me, bro. We all wear these cool, like we all wear goggles and yeah. stuff. And then how people know you is by your goggles. So I'll wear blue goggles. And they just know that, yep, that's Carl. Okay. Because, we, you know, we're wearing masks and hoods and, like... No, I did not know that. You're wearing, like, hazmat suits? No, we're not wearing hazmat suits. It's basically just regular PPE. Like, we're wearing a frock. And we're I don't know what a like, frock is. A frock is basically, like, this, like, protective gear. Can you show me a picture of it? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> like, I shall show you what a frog like is. Paper. That is not. <laughs> that's not. This is not what I wear to work. That is not <laughs> what I thought you wore to work, bro. No, okay. Uh, it's beautiful medi- though. Medical frock. Medical frock. Okay. Let's do that. Oh, frock. Medical. F- <laughs> medical Med- for real. <laughs> medical frog. <laughs> Is that I, I don't wear this. Okay, I can't necessarily show you <laughs> what the frock looks like, but it's basically something that you just put over you, zip it up. It just it's kind of like it's made of a material to where it's like it can just brush off like any type of like fluids or solutions that go on it and stuff like that. But then we also wear like a like a large hood and then um goggles and a face mask because obviously like we're around tissue. Like it's you know, very I I I can imagine it and I think I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, There's a certain thing that like, we... It's like this, right? Like a little medical gun? Basically. Something but like we're, that. it's that's It's like less KKK-ish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that shit was KKK-ish. Yeah, a little. It's a little. That, that hood was a little pointy. Okay, but yeah. But <laughs> basically, we have to wear like all this... Um, all this protective gear but then we just know and how people know me is like i'm i'm always the dude that's dancing in the room okay like i like to have fun in my rooms like i like to have music blaring in there and i just love to like you know be able to have a good time man you know what i mean so you know that is one make thing, it entertaining that is one thing that i do miss a little bit when it comes to having a actual workspace because i work remotely you know yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So I don't really talk to my coworkers. I don't hang out with coworkers. Granted, yeah. the coworkers that I have, they are I don't they don't really seem like cool people. But I'm really glad that you're <laughs> You already hear from be, Jay's first, guys. You fucking suck. You know, they, Tighten up. They'll never see this. And if you do, Eric is cool. Artie is cool. Tony is cool. Uh Jeremy, Merritt, you're cool. Uh Ronnie, I don't even know what the fuck you look like and I've worked with you for like I three just years. recently had breakfast. Um I think it was was it today Saturday? Yeah. Uh, yesterday morning, I had breakfast with my coworkers, and it's it's always such a great time because we just talk shit. And that's awesome. And I guess that's just a pro when it comes to having an actual workspace. Yeah. But I don't know, man. I'm, maybe maybe I'll switch it up sometime soon, and I'll do like a little hybrid zone just so then yeah. I can get a little bit out there again because I've been I, remote I, for a while. I feel like it's just like the type of person that you are too. Because I mean, you know me, I'm like a social person. Like I love to talk to people. But, you know, some people like Jasper, she can work remotely, you know, like civil engineers are usually like Jasper explained to me this, like usually all civil engineers are kind of like introverted Mm -hmm. and like, you know, like I talk to with Jasper all the time. They have like this corporate talk to where it's like we're all of our coworkers could be in a circle and I've sat in the circle before. So this is like firsthand experience, right? I'm in this circle with them and they'll talk about a conversation. But as soon as they're done with that conversation, they just look at each other and just stare at each other. That's awkward. That I can't, and I tell her all the time. It bothers me. I always have to say something, bro. Like mm. I don't like awkward silence. It's like one of my. <sighs> that happens all the time in my work meeting. Oh, we'll, dude. We'll we'll be talking about something, and then it'll be quiet. Just quiet for like ten for no seconds. Fucking, I'm just yes, like, bro. For like longer than it should be. What are we doing? <laughs> what are we gonna talk about, bro? Are we done with the meeting? And oh then, my god, bro. Like, Tighten up, bro. Talk about something. <laughs> It's like nobody says anything for like 10 minutes. I'm mean, sorry, the 10 minutes, 10 seconds. Then randomly a coworker would be like, yeah. So anyways, guys, uh, uh, if you guys don't have any more questions, then uh, I guess we can end the meeting. I'm just like, yeah, I think the meeting's done, dog. Um, but uh, I wouldn't mind. Uh, I don't think I would mind being in a work environment with coworkers if I also didn't have to deal with customers because I'm not really a huge fan of um, uh, customer service. And you don't do customer service, right? No. You don't. Yeah, exactly. I think that that's pretty cool. The fact I that, did work in customer service, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like being in an environment where you get to be with your coworkers and just do what you need to do without having to worry about customer service. I think that that's pretty cool. I think I can do that for sure. Um, yeah. But for now, I'm going to keep doing what I do, which is what I do. Um, but it really just depends, bro. It really just depends. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's like, like I said, some people fit different types of jobs. Like for me, in my job, I love talking to people. I'm with people all the time. But you know, some people just like to work remote and be in their own thing. And that's just that's just how people are. That's just how we're wired. You know what I mean? But yeah, I do. I do do a lot of my job. I feel like I just do a lot of things, and I don't give myself acknowledgement enough to like say that I know, but mm-hmm. I do know. 
And you do know. But I just don't think about it all the time because my brain kind of just like everything, mm-hmm. everything around me. So, yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for telling us a little bit more about you, Mr. Paolo. Of course, of course, of course. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode. We learned a lot more about Carl. And uh, if you guys have any questions regarding donations when it comes to organs, maybe don't go to Carl because he doesn't know everything. But, <laughs> you know. Uh, if you have I'm any the more least questions, person to talk to about it. There's a lot more people, a lot more knowledgeable than me. <laughs> if you have any questions with uh, Carl or whatever Carl does or anything about his um, profession, then definitely feel free to hit him up. Uh, yes, DM sir. him personally or DM the Why Not Podcast page. And uh, thank you guys so much. Make sure that you check out Okaze merch. We're both wearing our Okaze shirts right now. We're matching yin and yang. You know how it would be, black and yellow. Uh, but also make sure that you check out Whole Strength, also another dope brand. Yes, sir. Uh, shameless plug. Please check out Aura Brand and uh, Love also you, shout out to uh, Wi Fi Johnny for launching Automotion Consulting. The boy Johnny! If you need funding for anything, whether that be starting a business, investing, paying off debt, Automotion Consulting will definitely get you where you need to be. Tell them that you came from the Why Not podcast and maybe you'll get a little bit of something from us. So thank you guys so much and we're going to year out in a three, two, one. Yay! Yeah. Good night, everybody. Good night, good night, good night. I hope y'all fuckers learned something today, you stupid ass bitches. I'm sorry. That was a little much. I love you guys.